Hey, welcome back to Grit Gym. I got a guest here, Grit Gym uh, Eric Schwager, not Schwager. Even Schwager. though I like to, I like to say Schwager. I think Schwager is much more fun. Eric's been working at Grit Gym for about a year now. Really impressive guy. Uh, gets nothing but compliments from everybody, and not just because uh, he's got the swag, but also uh, or his good looks or anything or his big muscles. Uh, just because he's a great dude, and uh, that's why I wanted to. Kind of bring him on the show and have him back as a as a regular uh, person out of the show because he's a wealth of knowledge. He's a really smart guy and uh, he's pretty analytical and he sits down and thinks about this stuff. And I think you guys are going to get a lot out of hearing from from uh, from Eric. Which it's kind of funny looking at this now. You got like big uh, big bearded blonde dude and a big bearded <laughs> <laughs> dark haired dude. But you want to kind of introduce yourself a little bit and tell him um, some of the people will be afternoon people that don't really get to hang out with you as much as. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Um, yeah, so uh, <clears throat> I am 25 years old. I'm from Iowa City. I've lived here all my life. Um, graduated City High. In well beyond 25 years old, too, I would say. Like, like I've met a lot of 25-year-olds, and they're not where you are. Oh, you know? Thank so, you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean that complimentary wise. Try to stay yeah. ahead of the curve. Um, <laughs> anyway. I yeah, so, so City High graduated in 2010. Um, from there, I went to Kirkwood. I um, actually got an AA degree in criminal justice. I thought I was going to be a cop for a long time, which thinking back on is, you know, kind of weird. I, <laughs> I, know, uh, I was super set on it at the time, but yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I mean, I asked you this during your interview too. Uh, I was like, why did you want to be a cop? And right. like, uh, it's, it's amazing how much the reason that you wanted to be a cop was similar to the reason that you want to do what you do now. Right. You know, it's, yeah. it's pretty cool. Yeah. But um, anyway, keep going. Yeah. So from there... Um, I originally started at, uh, and then I went on to the University of Iowa with the intent of just getting a four-year degree to help further my uh, career in law enforcement. And uh, I, I actually didn't know, I actually had just signed up <coughs> for a uh, communications major until, and, and I switched it two days before the deadline. Oh, really? I signed up for communications, I heard it was easy. I'm like, I just need a four-year degree because it doesn't matter what it's in at yeah. that point, it's just having a bachelor's. Right, and, right, um, right. So I signed up <clears throat> for communications two days before one of my friends and lifting buddies was like, hey, you know they have an exercise science <laughs> thing at Iowa. And I, you know, That's I, how it happened. I, it was just like, hey, uh, you, know, uh, you know. Yeah, and I'd, I mean, I'd been, I was super obsessed with lifting at, at that point. Uh, I just had never thought of it a career. I didn't realize you could make money, you know, off of training people. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so I changed, two days before, I changed my major to that. And then after the first semester, I knew that I was not going to do law enforcement. <laughs> I wanted to get into the exercise science yeah. field. And uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's amazing. Like, and really, like, even you telling that story, like, right there, like, when I was in college, this was not an option. This, right. was, this yeah. wasn't a thing yet. Yeah, uh, it, it just wasn't out there. Like nobody was doing this, um, and I just happened to walk into a gym one day where a guy was doing this uh, when I in like 2007 when I was just out of college. I was like, "Wait, this is an option." Yeah, it's crazy this is, how far this is insane. Is I want to do this. Evolved since then. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that's it's, a pretty short amount of time. I mean, 2007 yeah. was 11 years ago, so <clears throat> right. Nuts, but what's your yeah. like? What's your big reason? Like, like, uh, like you obviously have a passion for this stuff. Mm -hmm. You can't l learn enough about it. You, are, I would say, you are in a very healthy way obsessed with what you do. Mm -hmm. Like, why? <laughs> well, like, okay. So, I guess going back, I, I started getting into strength training. Um, it must have been ninth grade of high school. Um, yeah, that's and, a good point. Like, what was it like before, before, before lifting? Yeah, before lifting, I, I don't know. I, I wasn't. Uh, as a kid, I, I always loved to be outside, you know, climb trees, run around. But I was never, I never uh, had a passion for sports. Yeah. No, no. I, I played um, seventh grade football, and that's the start and end of my. Oh really? Uh, of my <laughs> organized sports. Like, I think I actually I played soccer in kindergarten. Yeah. Uh, but I don't really remember. You know, yeah. that's you know, kindergarten. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that was the start and end of my. Uh, organized sports <laughs> experience um, but so I got into lifting and I think there's about uh, I hear like from high school athletes uh, there's about three reasons why you get into to yeah. wanting to lift weights right I think the first one is because of sport through a sport like you're lifting for your sport I think that's the majority yeah. uh, the second is because um, you're bullied 
maybe yeah. like you hear that a lot it's sad at least there's some it, it's sad but yeah it's the good and the bad right? It, yeah right like uh, that's that's my sentiment yeah um, good, you hear that from a lot of like powerlifters especially in interviews yeah. um yeah. you know the hardcore strength uh, athletes yeah smelly uh, wasn't it he got he, that's how yeah. he was yeah. yeah yeah he got he, he, somebody said that he was smelly and that uh <laughs> and he punched him in the face and that's how he got his nickname yeah yeah, yeah. so that's but that the, neither of those first two are me that the third one i think is kind of a Kind of, I guess it comes boils down to culture. Like, uh, I think most cultures uh, kind of um, look up to guys who are, you know, natural leaders. They're big, strong guys. And I think for me, it came totally. through uh, at that age. It was like past. Uh, I was always a huge um, action adventure. Yeah. Movie time. Like that was all yeah. I ever wanted to watch, right? Yeah, totally. And so uh, <laughs> some that come to mind, like Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, uh, Stallone movies, and. Uh, Harrison Ford stuff. Oh, Harrison you know? Ford. I thought you were going to go John. Yeah. For me, it's John Claude. John Claude, yeah. 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 John, he's, John Claude's he's awesome. Shit. Yeah. Um, so stuff like that. Uh, and then, you know, playing with action figures, uh, you know, <laughs> just li this uh, little boy stuff. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, kind of having a draw towards that, uh, you know, warrior culture, leadership, you know, you wanting be to protect. You want to be a big, strong and, guy. Yeah. yeah. So it was just some kind of inner calling to that um yeah which kind of got me started you know there's no other reason i just wanted to be bigger i yeah. just i just wanted to lift to get bigger. yeah i might i might <laughs> add a fourth with kind of which kind of bugs me because i like things in primes yeah but i would add girls to that too like okay the, the attraction See, from girls. so <laughs> i thought about girls and i think that's a huge drive but i also think that's the least motivating drive i, I do too when i just think because because one of two things happen if you lift uh, for girls, right? The first one is that you get the girl, and then you <laughs> no longer have a drive. Yeah. And the second one is that you, right, a, a girl wanting to get the girls being a sexual yeah. drive, right? And you figure out there's other ways yeah. to, to go about that as a high school, <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> um, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. As soon as, uh, as soon as you start to get the girls' attraction, then all of a sudden it's like, well, I don't need to lift anymore now. Right. Now what's going on? Yeah. yeah. No, that's funny. No, I, the whole time you're saying, that, I was like, I wonder what the third one's going to be. But yeah, the third one. I think that's like, I, I think that's an under undervalued thing just in our society today. I don't know if you would ag agree with it or not, but like uh, valuing that, especially, I don't know. Like, I'm not trying to say like the Me Too movement is bad or anything like that. Like, I think it's great. However. Like, uh, w there is a little bit of like, like saying to a little boy, like, it's okay to like, want to be a big, strong guy. Yeah. You know, like, I think there's right. something healthy there. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, and, and, yeah. and embodying that is definitely like something that was a very positive thing for you. It was a very positive thing for me, mm -hmm. I, th I think anyway. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. And I think that goes back to kind of like our, um, kind of evolutionary thing, right? You step back and, and maybe it's on a subconscious level that, you know, people are attracted to. Um, fit people, right? Because you're, because make, what, you can provide, you can, yeah. uh, like today I think it's shifting more towards attracted, not, I mean, you don't need that to provide anymore. Right. But, um, that there's a certain uh, set of characteristics that you need. Yeah, to it's, on some level, it's got to be kind of in our DNA a little bit, you know, our reptilian brain or right. whatever it's called to be, to like find certain things. And I mean, science has kind of proved this a little bit, but. Um, like we're kind of getting into another subject here that's like not really the reason, but uh, like I don't think it's all like just or is it all sexual drive? Like I don't think it's all sexual. Yeah, drive. no. I, I, like uh, I think for you, like you want to be a cop because you want to protect and serve. Right. You know, like yeah, what do you, yeah, like yeah. being a big strong guy. What do you want to do? You want to protect and serve. You know, mm -hmm. teaching others about uh, preventative uh, healthcare methods like lifting, uh, being powerful. You know, uh, right. good movement patterns. Like, what do you want, really want to do? You're trying to protect and serve. You know, so like it's a it's a pretty cool thing that that it's all kind of like circumvented for you. It's, it's really neat. So so you started lifting when you you said you were a freshman when you started lifting. Yeah, I must have been a freshman. Um, so what it was, it was a, just a regular PE class at, okay. where you could take a resistance training. It was called strength training. Um, nice which City High offered, which was amazing. Um, yeah, we did not have that. Right, yeah, and, so, and so, you know, City High for the time had just an awesome weight room. You know, at a time a lot of high schools didn't even have a free weight rack. They had like 18 Seriously. of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, so really fortunate to have had that. Yeah, you spoiled that. Yeah. <laughs> I had to steal a key from the boot from my best friend's mom that was on a member of the booster club just to sneak into the weight room. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally different scenario. but. But anyway, so you started, so you're a freshman in high school. What was the, what was the initial, uh, was it just like, oh, this is like, uh, this is just a piece of cake. I, all of a sudden I'm huge or what was it? 
How did it go? So me as a freshman in high school, imagine me being uh, well, give my me... same height, 80 pounds. Well, how tall are you now? So I'm uh, 6'3". See, I think um, you're, like, you're probably 6'4", six, 6'5". Maybe six, I'm 6'4". Six, for some reason, everyone... No I think one says 6'3". Everyone who I'm as tall as will always say 6'4", so maybe I am. 6'3 is the number I'm I've going always... on since like <laughs> high school that I got from a well, doctor. Well, maybe that's you know? it. Like maybe you were going, maybe you grew a couple inches. I grew another inch when I got to college. Yeah. When I was in high school, I was 6'3", and then when I got to college, um, yeah. I've always been measured at 6'4". Uh-huh. So, so either... Okay. Maybe, yeah. And I think you're a little taller than I am. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, but, some of it I probably have better anyway, posture so, since I So now you're like, you're like six, so like you're six three to six five. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. And, um, uh, anyway. So, and, and I've been that height since eighth grade. So. Whoa, were yeah, you really? Yep. Yeah. Holy shit. Um, and so, but I was, you know, freshman year, I was about 150 pounds. Yeah. So not only did I not want to play sports, the coaches didn't want me yeah, to. Yeah, anyway, you know, there weren't coaches, yeah. like, sometimes you get a big kid in a high school and the coaches are constantly trying to right. get them involved. Like, until my senior year, I don't think a coach <laughs> would have looked at me and been like, let's get this guy into sports. Yeah. Um, I, I, so, so yeah, it was, it was a very gradual, my whole experience has always been just gradually yeah. building up, you know, yeah. um, which is the reality of yeah. No, I, I think, think you know. Yeah, I was having that. Uh, I was having that realization this morning. It was just like, why do like I was trying to analyze like why do people burn out? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think it's because they do too much. Yeah. Or even maybe just I, I think it's because they do too little and they never get progress. So if you're sure. just continually yeah. progressing, then you're never going to burn out. Yeah. Because like right. Yeah. When you're just yeah, working yeah. your ass off and there's no progress, that's why you're doing suck. it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, then so you get you addicted to progress. seeing your numbers go up. Right. Right. And and th that's another point I was going to make because I think a lot of people start. Uh, especially like if you're starting in high school, you, you care more about size and appearance yeah. than yeah. anything, right? That's right. why you do it. You want to look like a bodybuilder. Whereas the longer you stay in the game, the more that shifts to putting to weight on the bar, and then further. And then if you stay in long enough, just from hearing older guys, I'm not to this point yet, but you know, from hearing a ton of older guys talk, you know, then it's just about training in smart ways yeah. so to be able to do it for the rest of your life right at yeah. that point it's yeah. you know because they they were they started yeah. out going for a product and they ended up falling in love with the process too right you know which i mean like i there's this strange either or mindset that does i think it's both i think it's, like yeah. you got to be going for a product and you got to fall in love with the process right i think it's both for sure so you started lifting it was a, it was a bit of a journey um by the time you were a senior in high school you were a bigger stronger guy um, like I was the same way. I was, I was actually sick. I wasn't sick, you know, as tall as you, but I was six, 245 pounds and I had grown like six inches in a year yeah. and I can barely clap my hands together. So coaches weren't looking for me to do yeah. anything. Yeah. <laughs> so you, so you go to college, uh, you get the, the, you go the criminal justice route and then almost like, like, uh, what is that word? Serendipity, almost fate, fate. That's the word I was going to Yeah. For. Yeah. Almost <laughs> fate that it happens to be that you find out about this. Um, and then what did you do from there? So you started doing the, what is it, Health and Human Phys? Yeah, Health and Human Phys yeah. uh, with the track and exercise science at the university is a lot of different branches of Health and Human Physiology. Oh, okay. So cool. exercise science track. Um, and yeah, I, uh, <clears throat> um, I knew right away it was for me, it's what I wanted to do. Um, shortly after that, um, I started an internship uh, with uh, Phil Johnson in West Branch with West Branch Strength and Conditioning. So that was kind of my first big uh, experience into the actual world, yeah. of, right? Because there's there's what you learn in textbooks in school yeah. and there's practical experience. Yeah. And you need both. You um, need both. And I think a lot of people in my major made the mistake of thinking that school is gonna set them up oh, no. with everything they, you know? And it's almost uh -huh. more like you need a foundational knowledge in physiology, but when it comes to getting a job and holding a job, yeah. that's, I mean, yeah, you you need to be able to explain the three functions of the TFL and point to and, and you need to know what it, like uh, you need to know your acetabulum from your electron process, you know, like a fancy way of saying like your ass from your elbow. So, um, but uh, like uh, you also need to know the other side of the snare. Right? right. Yeah. Like if you if you don't actually do the lifting, what? Do you, <laughs> right. Yeah. How are you gonna yeah. carry this across? Yeah. Um, so so I started there. I, I interned on and off. Uh, with Phil for uh, two and a half years um, and then um, my other big uh, opportunity. practical yeah, yeah. opportunity yeah, uh, practical opportunity. experience yeah. was um, uh, internship with Iowa football which yeah. was totally life-changing yeah mean, University of Iowa football yeah. like uh, um, 
it's a big deal. Yeah, something that I'll never forget. Uh, I learned a lot of lessons there. Yeah, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was that was amazing. Uh, it was a full time, you know, 50, 50 hour weeks uh, oh, yeah. for four months, um, and the that was in the off season. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's so. it's yeah. Those guys are easy to put. They're putting in tons of hours. They're waking up really early. The the and the the intensity that you have to carry while you are a coach at yeah. that level. The, the is, work is ethic just, you are always Division on. one is it's yeah, insane. It's something yeah. else. It's uh, I mean, you got to see it to know. Yeah, you. Know, I like, mean, those guys are some of the hardest workers. Mm -hmm. You know. Around. Yeah, I, I love that when people are like, "Oh, it's genetics." I'm like, "Screw your genetics." That <laughs> and there's a bunch of people out there with the genetics to be able to do that, and they're not doing it. Right. So it can't just be genetics. Yeah, they work their absolute ass off. Yeah. So, so you what? So you did the uh, the internship at the University of Iowa, and then uh, what? How was your strength training going along in that route too? Because you had some like some things that. Because I think that people that, like from what we just said, it almost sounds like it was just like this, like. But you had yeah. like like I think people think that when you start lifting, oh, you just keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger, yeah. no matter what you do. But how many how many times did you have to go back to the drawing board and look at your programming and go back to the drawing board right. and and say, well, this isn't working out. Like uh, my knees aren't feeling this great, my shoulders not feeling this great. Like you know, like, right? Yeah. What were some and, of the, uh, the obstacles you had? In the meantime, right, and when you zoom out at it over over the years, if you're just looking at one snapshot of a point during the year, yeah, it's going up linearly. But mm -hmm. you're always going to have setbacks. Yeah, um, I mean injuries are unavoidable. I mean with good programming, you minimize them as much as possible. But yeah. I mean to but be human is to you know at some point you're going to have something like hopefully it's as minimal as possible right. but you know you you go long enough with this thing and at some point you're going to have something that doesn't feel so great right yeah you know? and um, uh and it just like it's just sort of it can be a tweak in your back and it yeah. goes away in two days great and usually it's from i mean it's not it's almost never getting injured in the weight room right never. it's it's yeah uh, it's because you sneeze funny <laughs> yeah 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 and uh because you've had poor posture for so long and don't know how to move and you know it's wearing down on you and then one day it just snaps yeah. and uh, yeah. you know you realize that and it's, and it's easy to point at stuff in the gym but it's usually not it's it's right. all it's the lifestyle like you do one hour in the gym five days a week you did five hours well there's 168 hours in a week right you know that's 163 hours that you your your tissues weren't moving around where they were developing you know a poor movement pattern where exactly. they were getting stiff where they were you know when bad things were happening so yeah. Uh, yeah, you have to look at lifestyle too, but yeah. but anyway, so you, so you, what were some of the setbacks that you, you ran into? Was it like so um, the biggest setback was um, and I don't I don't even know exactly what it was. It's some sort of uh, some form of patella tendonitis that just got yeah. insane. So um, the basically the front of his, the bottom part of the front of his knee wasn't feeling so great. Yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, it uh, got to the point where it you know I had to stop doing any. Uh, leg movements, anything where that knee yeah. went into flexion, where it uh, bent, and the deeper into flexion it got, yeah. the worse. And so, could you do deadlifts? Um, I could do s totally stiff legged. Oh, deadlifts. that was it. Yeah. You could, yeah, so yeah. you couldn't, so, couldn't squat, couldn't do normal deadlifts, could yeah. only do straight leg deadlifts. Uh, so <laughs> you're ruling out lunges, you're ruling out split oh, squats, yeah. you're ruling out sled press uh, pushing. Yeah, you're ruling out like ba almost walking and and doing yeah. Like that. And so it, your hamstrings had to go great. Yeah. So <laughs> so basically, I got totally overdeveloped hamstrings yeah. with. Really, <laughs> and I went to my physical therapist eventually. I, I didn't do physical therapy for a long time, but by the time yeah. I got there, I had been doing a ton of stiff legged yeah. uh, deadlifts and she's like, you know, eventually it's not, it's going to be counterproductive to have hamstrings right. that big without thought, you know, it yeah. throws it off balance. Eventually, yeah, like you do want a really strong hamstring, right, right. you know, like one of the biggest, uh, one of the biggest things we see with people is that they don't have that really developed yes. hamstring, that really developed glute to be able to, to utilize the hamstring, but in this case, yeah. At some point, too much is still I, too I, much. Yeah, I was I was pushing that point. So anyway, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I got to the point where going upstairs hurt, you know, right. like, and I was I, I was like, you know, 21, 22 years old. Yeah, you're way and too then, young. And I was, so anyway, I, I, I attribute that to uh, poor movement quality back before I started right. down the road, you know, exercise science path, not knowing what I was doing. Right. Um, but yeah, because you know, yeah, when you first started, you were probably just. You were yeah. young, and so you could beat the shit out of your body, yeah. and it still make progress. So you're like, okay, cool. Yeah, you know, right. But when at some point, yeah. there's, there's a like a detriment, <laughs> like it is a point. Of, you know, like the the return on investment isn't so high anymore. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, so for uh, 
three and a half years I couldn't really squat. Like there's points where I would uh, just take so much, you know, NSAIDs that I could, <laughs> you know. Uh, Have a whole bottle of ibuprofen <laughs> so you can squat? Yeah, yeah. So, wow. you know, I'd, I'd do it for two months and uh, get my squat back up to a certain point and then, you know, at that yeah. point your stomach starts hurting, you just don't want to be on them. Um, yeah, and then you stop again. And so anyway, um, but eventually I find a way to, to manage that um, and then, well, and just bring up, you know, uh, learn how to actually squat and uh, um, move and... Right. Uh, like most people when you first teach them, how to, like when you're first learning how to squat, they just squat all me. It's, right, it's right. just like everything's shifted toward the knee and it's just like how much can you bend the knee and really it should be more about the hip yeah. and how you separate the hips back or how you separate the knees back into the hip exactly. um, so that you're putting more because those are the big strong muscles your muscle the knee doesn't really have very many big muscles it's, right. it's a very yeah. intricate joint uh, and your hip has huge muscles the largest cross-sectional area of any muscle is actually in your hip so uh, yeah I would I would guess you were just sitting there and yeah, I, I wish I had video to go back and look at. Is yeah. what I imagine was happening is that weight was dumping forward, my heels would lift up a Probably. little bit, and just yeah. yeah. So <laughs> anyway, um, uh, no, I think that's a, that's a pathway a lot of us get to yeah. learning what we. But now you can squat, right? Yeah, right. so now I can squat, yeah, and I mean it's something I just got to keep manage. Yeah, you know, like I got it. I I can't forget about it and get lazy with my, mm -hmm. um, you know, therapy with it. But, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's how so, that's that's how I am with my hip and my shoulder. If I don't if I don't continue to do the things that need to be done, then I, like I'm, I'm just right. I end up walking around like John Wayne and bitching about him about my shoulder every time. It moves, yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean injuries like that can be so depressing, especially when your life revolves around. Yeah, yeah. You when, know? when this is everything <laughs> right. to you, is and, your, uh, your greatest thing that you've ever had, and, and then it gets stripped away from you, then it's easy to fall into that sort of like. This life sucks. Yeah, this is the only thing I've ever loved, and I don't have it anymore. Yeah. Sort of thing. Yeah, and it's it just comes down to, you know, keeping hope, trying every option you can. Yeah. You know, because eventually, if you get obsessed with fixing it, you know, you're gonna find yeah. you're gonna find a you, way. You tend to get what you focus yeah. on. Yeah, you know, you, you focus on how like all the the crappy things in life. You're probably gonna get uh, a few more crappy things. Exactly. If, you, if you tend if you look for the solution, you're probably gonna be more likely to find the solution. So. Uh, I think that anyway. Like, yeah, uh, like I'm, I agree. I mean, I, I think it would be hard to, you know, yeah. disagree with that. But um, so, what's it like? So, uh, what's it like now that you're done with school? You you join the career world because um, it's different training when you yeah. have a job. It's different right. when you're on your feet for yeah. you know six to eight hours training yeah. people, and then you also have to go work out. Right. You know, what's it like now? Um, I mean, it's going good. I. Uh, so I, I work the morning shifts here Monday through Friday. So you know my day generally looks like um, you know I might cut, I, I get here at 5 a.m. Um, I'm out the door around 10:30 and uh, yeah. I go home, eat, take a nap, and then knock training out. And you know that's always yeah. generally my first priority. And then I try to get some <laughs> studying done and then uh, relax. Yeah, yeah. And I knew so, that was like when you first started that, like doing the morning things. That was one of the big concerns. Was like, is this going to negatively affect my training sure, because, yeah. and I, I remember just hearing you say it like resonated in me <laughs> so much because it was just like how much importance because like how much importance you put on that a and how much it leads to like I don't know I don't want to call it happiness but you're just the the general well-being of your life the joy of right, your life you know? right like, uh, yeah. like if you didn't have that thing it would suck so it's like I don't want to do this if it's going to take away from that right um, and I was a little concerned for that too because like I to see somebody else not uh, to have something ripped away from them and knowing what that feels like, oh, I'm yeah. just like, no, I would never want that for somebody. Yeah. It's, it's awful. But. And there's an adjustment period, but yeah. you know, and, I mean, eventually you adapt yeah, you and overcome, adapt. Yeah. you know? Yeah, you yeah. totally adapt and overcome. Yeah. But. Um, and then what's it been like working with the, you know, you worked with some athletes, you worked with general population, you worked with high school athletes, mm -hmm. like, so elite athletes, you know, uh, high school athletes, you worked in general population now, what, what, like one of the, some of the things that uh, like you didn't expect. Yeah, to, uh, uh, well if you would have went back uh, at the start of my, uh, you know, if, if you would have went back when I was 22 and said, hey, do you think you'll enjoy, you know, training uh, 30 to 50 year old women every day, uh, I probably would have, yeah, you, you know, stopped. I would have like, too. Uh, I would have been like, no. <laughs> that but, sounds awful. But it's awesome and it's, yeah. you know, it's so fun and uh, Grit Gym like just attracts super motivated people yeah. and uh, super hard. Like I mean, there 
the 40 and 50 year old women I train here are just as hard working as, oh, yeah. as so many of the athletes the, I train. The moms and, and the grandmas that yeah. I work with, like, they, they would run, uh, not circles as in like performance wise, but circle as in work ethic wise. Yeah. They would just, they would just beat the piss out of any of the, the, uh, like professional or division one athletes that I've ever yeah. worked with. Yeah. I mean, totally. just murder and, them. And, uh, what's really nice about, uh, working with older clients is that they, uh, through experience, they understand the importance of sleep and diet. You know, it's not Seriously. like uh, where you're preaching to him all the time about it. Like, but I just want to go out and drink and, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and get laid and, and, yeah. and have a good time. And uh, I don't need to sleep. Why would I need to sleep? Yeah. And you're, yeah. And you're like, I'm a kid. I'm going to strangle you. <laughs> Only I'd get fired. That's a hard, <laughs> hard lesson for high schoolers to learn. Yeah, uh, I was thinking of all the D one guys. That I used oh to yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, with you, the drinking. You, yeah, you yeah. Sleep, you you staying up till four o'clock in the morning, and you're yeah. coming in and and thinking you're gonna lift at eight. Like, give me get real, kid. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, no wonder you're not progressing. But yeah, moms are phenomenal. Uh, like, yeah. I uh, yeah, I think the same thing. Like, if you would have told twenty two year old Adam that working out with moms and, and and dads and grandmas was gonna be like the the highlight of his life, I I, I think I would have been like, you're crazy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do that. <laughs> They're phenomenal. Yeah. But, um, and you, like, it's a weird thing because they appreciate you in a way that I don't know if I've ever been appreciated uh, for, like, teaching them certain things and right. giving them a fresh perspective on this health and nutrition and exercise. Yeah. But then, like, you have this, like, weird appreciation for the life lessons that you and they teach. Yeah. Yeah. They end up teaching you. Yeah. yeah. For real. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's awesome. It's, a, it's this amazing, <laughs> uh, like, respect or appreciation or whatever is exchanged there. I don't know what it is. But yeah. It's... Yeah, it's yeah. phenomenal. And that's another thing with older clients, appreciating, um, you know, learning proper technique. And, well, you know, at high, high school, you just want to lift, he lift heavy, yeah. um, you know, but really appreciating um, the finer points of what it is to, you know, be an athlete. Because, it, like, these people who train here are all athletes, right? If you're lifting... Everybody more, has an inner athlete. It, yeah, yeah, they're all strength athletes. Right. If you got to, like... The second you start resistance training, you gotta live like that because it'll it'll tear you down. Right, right. You're tearing down your body. You have to eat and sleep. Because that's where like all the magic happens. An athlete. Yeah, exactly. that's where all the benefits happen. Um, and I think a lot of people here like have had a little bit of their stripped or their 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 uh, health stripped away from them, so they know the value of it. Yeah. Like how much yeah. it can just uh, set you down and just tear tear your life apart. Like if you don't have it, you know, like what what do you have? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a pretty amazing thing uh, watching people go through this. Just a, it's a totally different scenario than training professional athletes or Division one athletes or even high school kids. Yeah. It's, just, yeah. it, it's it's pretty wild. But um, it, and uh, like the life lessons that they give you and all that stuff. But um, anything else that you want to? I mean, we're getting kind of the end of the the half hour. Anything else that you want to like words of wisdom or uh, uh, advice that you have for for starting out in the strength game? For uh, Young, younger kids starting out? No, or just, like just, uh, for, just for for trainers know, or for general? No, for general population, just thirty to fifty year old. Uh, yeah. They don't like, uh, like you think of the person that's in here. Like before they came in here, they were like a cardio right. addict. Uh, they didn't know that they could lift. They were actually told that if they lift, all these bad things would happen. Yeah. You know, uh, they did always want to be uh, these this strong, powerful being, but everybody told them, no, don't do that. All these bad yeah. things will happen. And then they come in here and they find out that it was the answer that they were looking for the right. entire time. Like, yeah, it's badass, right? It happens yeah. all the time. Um, um, yeah, so I guess I would say, uh, <clears throat> so first, the first thing I'd recommend, you know, um, and you could say this is just because I'm a trainer, but when you're starting, you need to find someone to guide you on the path. And I'm not saying you need to spend money on it, but at least put in the time to research. You know, at the very least, look up some YouTube videos uh, by a qualified professional. And, you know, before you just go to the gym and look, look to your side and see what they're doing and yeah. then try to mimic that, you know? I've seen that all the time. Um, uh, you see that, like, you go into any big box gym. And you see, I mean, like... Yeah, you see people just wandering around. Yeah. Oh, I think I'll do this. I think I'll do that. You know? It's, yeah. Uh, I mean, you see, like, like one, all the foreign kids. Maybe to, one person there who knows, who, who knows what they're doing. Yeah. And is training in a safe manner. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, one, if you're lucky. And you might even look at that person and try to emulate what they're doing, but they're on another level than you. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There, there's just... I mean, it's like, you wouldn't, like... They're, you know, they're on a different plan. They're on a different, you know, like, you don't need to do what they're doing, even though they're doing exactly what they should be doing. Yeah. Um, w when you get injured, you don't try to uh, fix yourself, right? You go to a physical therapist. When you get sick, you go to a doctor. Um, 
these are all things that deal with your body, and yeah. it's not replaceable, and uh, you can't I mean, you can't take it lightly because no. yeah. you can do irreversible damage. Yeah, and I think you like know? where medicine is right now, I think people kind of have this idea that you can reverse it, but like, uh, like uh, we get people every every great once in a while, I'll end up in a conversation with somebody who's on the verge of gastric bypass. Yeah. And, Whoa, what was that? And uh, like gastric bypass, they think is the answer. Yeah, you know the, yeah. the answer, the secret that once I get this, everything will be. What they don't say is that like almost every single gastric bypass fails and everybody gains back all the weight. And yeah. the you know it's it's not necessarily the answer. You're going to have to do a ton of work along with it, and it's going to be really uncomfortable the whole way. So are you really willing to get you know cut open, right? Gutted, stabled and, up. You and know, surgery yeah. might be the easiest way to go about most things, but it's uh, almost never the most effective unless yeah. you're just so far. You know. Yeah. Uh, to a point where there's just no coming back, but right. that's so uh, few of the cases. Like an ounce of prevention <clears throat> is worth a, like, and I think like a ton of cure. But m the the saying is an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I think it's yeah. worth, I think it's worth just tons tons of cure. Yeah, I like that. That's yeah, yeah exactly. Maybe we should make a t-shirt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I kind of cut you up there. But anything else that you no, got? Um, uh, Want to leave them with? No, that's it. I mean, if you're just getting started, you know, um, find what motivates you. Find uh, a qualified uh, instruction, whether it's on the internet or someone you're paying for. You know, um, don't go into it uh, uneducated, yeah. blind. Yeah, don't go in blind. Get yourself yeah. hurt. Or, That's... or go to someone that is also blind. You know, the blind leaving the blind doesn't work very well either. Totally. Well, thanks for, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks uh, for having yeah. me. It was yeah. fun. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, if you guys can do me a favor, if you can put in the comment section below, if you would like to see Eric on each Thursday, uh, you get you just just comment below, and what, what symbol do we want to do? Thumbs up? Sure. Maybe, yeah. maybe we should do the middle finger. Like, <laughs> the middle finger emoji. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nah, thumbs up will be good. Everybody, everybody, everybody will get on the video and be like, what? what? Why is everybody doing a <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for being here, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, please click the share button. Send this out to everybody that you know. Uh, Eric is, uh, he's from Iowa City, so a lot of the people that you know probably know Eric, so they're probably going to want to watch this video. Um, did a great job. Uh, I, you know, I, I think he, he does phenomenal in here. If you're, if you're in the area, you should definitely stop in and say hi. But anyway, thank you. Thanks, man. We'll see you guys soon.